can I ask everyone, is there anyone in the room who has not gotten to interact with our speaker before? So first time, do you know Ben? First time. Right on, cool. Anybody else, first time hanging out with Ben? Megan, have you really hung out with Ben? <laughs> been in the same room? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So then most of you know what I'm talking about. I've got some context with which to work here. Um, I believe that uh, you are at a groundbreaking event right now because I really believe that given Ben's passion for people and also his uh, skill set that God has given him, that uh, he's going to be doing much bigger versions of things like this in front of a much larger audience. And when you get the book for Christmas in three years, whenever it comes, you could say, I saw him speak at this little place. Now I have to pay like 50 bucks to get a ticket, right? I really do believe that, I do. And this is her, his first time getting to speak um, in this kind of a setting for our office, but it's not his first time getting to speak. And, uh, and if you've gotten to interact with him, you know what kind of power like, he brings uh, to those kinds of conversations. So uh, I wish I could take credit for thinking of this idea, but my wife came to me when we were deciding who we should invite to speak at our gratitude talk, and she said, you know who I feel would do the best job of anyone we could possibly get to say yes would be Ben. And, uh, and so he asked him, he was gracious enough. I mean, there's a lot of, he wants to do this right, so there's a lot of planning and work that's gone into it, and, uh, and he's very excited to share with you. So uh, I just want to make sure that you know how special this awesome event is that you get to listen to. Um, so if you would, help me give him a warm round of applause. The other thing about that story, before we get started here, the uh, choosing who to speak story, I was looking for a speaking gig in November-ish, <laughs> and I hadn't talked had talk about it, I was just like, you know, alright, wrote it on my little journal, like, alright, November speaking gig, and what I want to speak on, and we were sitting at that table back there for a marketing meeting, and Aaron and Aaron were going back and forth like, you got the garage to talk covered? Yeah, I got it. Sweet. Awesome. And I was thinking in my head, I want to do that. I want to do that one. I didn't say anything. Week, maybe? About a week later. So, hey, Ben, we were thinking about the gratitude talk. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Really excited about this. And uh, glad to share with you guys something that I'm passionate about from first-hand experience. Uh, called tonight's talk, The Transforming Power of Gratitude. Most of us know that gratitude is something we should do, right? Mm -hmm. Just like we should eat well, exercise occasionally, maybe have some healthy relationships, maybe do something that we care about with our lives, maybe. So just like those shoulds, gratitude can be something that we know we should do. But I want to talk tonight about not just Gratitude the idea, but gratitude the practice. What does gratitude do for your life? How do you make that a practice? How do you show up every day with a graceful heart, with a mindset that's open and plentiful, ready for the abundance that's all around you? How do you make that a practice? And what gets in the way? What barriers do you have for gratitude, and how do you break through those? <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> how do you break through those? And your name? I'm Hannah. Hannah. Ben. I was just set hot bar. That didn't, that didn't scare me. Sweet. <laughs> You're prepped. She's ready. She She's ready. Yes. <laughs> Works. <laughs> so great. So before we get started, I want to flash back about two years ago. I am broke. My wife and I are living in a, we're house parents for an intern house for our church. We are having communication issues. She's pregnant with our second child. I'm frustrated, angry, upset with where I am with my life. I'm working in real estate, and it's broke. Went in without a savings account. Great idea, by the way. Don't follow suit. And I was just starting this practice of affirmations. It was something that I got in coaching through the real estate office, and I was thinking, man, all right, I'm going to do it. And if you talk to people in my life in the past, like I'm not a, an angry or upset person, I generally have a positive demeanor, 
But inside, there was a lot of stuff that was not, not going so great. I was not loving my life. I was not joyful. I was not grateful. And uh, so when I would say the words in the morning of, I love my life, I love my daughter, my son, my wife, I love who I am, I love where I am, and I love what I get to do, it sounded about like that. Not super convincing, right? Who was convinced by that affirmation? <laughs> Just check. I didn't believe it. I started this practice, and now, flash forward to now, I'm giving a workshop on gratitude for Collins Chiropractic. That's awesome. <laughs> I work in the coolest place in the world, here in Washington. That's awesome. I love my job. I love my part-time job at Hockey. I've got an awesome relationship with my wife. Our kids are doing great. I'm living with my parents and loving it. That was unexpected. <laughs> like, I love my life. And I can say that in full confidence, and I wake up in the morning after getting some water, getting the body moving. It's, I love my life. I love my daughter, Hosanna, my son, Theo, my wife, Courtney, our unborn child. Three. <laughs> I love who I am. I love where I am. And I love what I choose to do. So let's do it. <laughs> Start with the upright. So I'm going to connect the dots. How did I get from there to here? It's uh, not complicated. You guys all know something about gratitude, or you wouldn't be here. This isn't like a magic pill that you take once, and then you're good. It's a practice, and I'm just here to share my story and share some tips. Cool? Yeah. Sweet. I think everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a reason for being. Maybe you don't know what yours is yet. Hopefully, it doesn't take a near-death experience you yeah, haven't already had one, to get you to wake up and see your purpose. But you have a purpose. I'm glad Sarah is not here, because I'm going to tell a story that she doesn't like to hear. Um, once upon a time, I was a junior in high school, driving too fast in a 15-passenger van. We went to Dick's for dinner, some friends of mine and I, and we are driving southbound I-5 from Seattle, and the speedometer goes up to 100, and the needle was doing that. So I knew I was going a little fast. A wheel comes off the ground at some point. It's like, oh, this is, this is not good. And I realized, got to take my friend home, which means I need to take 518. So let's do that. Move over, no traffic behind me, and there's a guardrail right in front of me. Crank the wheel to the left, and then turn it back right, and I spun around five and a half times in that 15 passenger van, stopping on the inside shoulder of the median. No one was hurt. The van wasn't even scratched. And the thought, the first thought that came to my mind was, I almost killed some of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> and it took a little while later, but the second thought that came was like, God really likes me. Mm -hmm. I have a reason for being here, and I don't know how that happened. I don't know how, I, like, the van should have flipped. It shouldn't have worked out the way it did, but it did, and I'm here. So I want to make the most of this. You also have a purpose for being here tonight. If you were of your life purpose, that in mind. What's your purpose for being here tonight? You have an intention. I talked to a patient, uh, John, talked to you a little bit about why are you here tonight? Can I just get some hands of interaction? Why are you here tonight? Anybody? Dr. Collins. I was really excited to hear this talk. Awesome. I want to kickstart my gratitude. Boom, kickstart your gratitude. Anybody else? I like reading what you post. Thanks. <laughs> I need a solid gratitude practice that I engage in every day. I think you're going to help with that. Awesome. I think you came to the right place. <laughs> Sam, did you have your hand up? Anytime it's good to see you, Ben. Thank you. Bonnie. Um, coming here gives me inspiration that I don't get other places, and I want, when I heard you were talking, to came to hear you. I'm glad you're here. Because I like what you represent. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Cool. So think about your intention going forward, whether you said it or not. What I'm going to say, just map it onto your own life, okay? You'll see things that I haven't said, and the things I've said will translate into new ways for you. Got it? Awesome. With that, let's move forward with our barriers to gratitude. Ooh. Let's do the tough thing first. So we talked about should. 
this idea that uh, if I just know what's healthy for me, I'll be healthy. But we're not. Just knowing I should exercise doesn't mean I'm fit. Just knowing I should eat well doesn't mean I'm healthy. We talked about that. Veer is the acronym I want you to think of. What steers you away from gratitude? What sucks your joy? List them, and then we'll go through them one by one, okay? Victim mentality. Excuses. Envy, entitlement, and resistance. Victim mentality. Excuses. Envy, entitlement, resistance. I like to think of victim mentality as a downward spiral. When you are blaming others for where you are in your life, when all your circumstances around you are the problem, and if only things would change, but I have no power to change it, when you're putting your power on someone else or waiting for something else to complete you, you have a victim mentality. Two years ago, I had a victim mentality. Pretty plain and simple. The choices that I made, like getting into real estate, moving into that intern house situation, which all around was awesome, but I was frustrated with it. All the choices that I made were choices that I made. And so to blame anyone else, my wife, our church, my company for the life that I had, like it's my life and I was making those choices, but I couldn't see that at the time. It sucks you down, it sucks your joy, you're unable to see forward when you're in that state of mind. Oh, then we've got our excuses. These are great. If only I had more time. Only I had, if I won the lottery, you know what? If I won the lottery, I just think I would do that trip to Africa that I've always wanted to do. Wanted to do. My health, my energy, oh man. You know, it's hard to feel happy when you feel crappy. It is. But the reverse is also true, and we'll touch more on that in a second. So these are our excuses primarily around time, energy, and money. These are the resources that we all possess at some level. I don't have enough. When I get enough, I will feel happy. Those kind of things. Making sense? Yeah. Good. Envy and entitlement.
contentment? Anybody else? Relaxed. Relaxed. I think sunshiny. Sunshiny. I like it. Open. Open. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. I think of lightness, like effervescent. Like uh, you shook a soda pop, stuck that on the table, and popped that open. <laughs> Bubbly, right? Where is there room with this? All that energy that could fizzle into something really beautiful is spent fighting a war with yourself inside about the life that you don't want. <clears throat> Sucks the gratitude right out. Come on in. So the basic idea underpinning this is be, do, have. If I'm waiting for something else to complete me, if I'm waiting to get something before I can be grateful, then I'm never going to have enough. I could have all the money in the world and I still would be unhappy because I'm waiting for that to bring me joy, to bring me gratitude. I could do all the right things. I could jump through all the hoops, I could go through the motions, but if I am not first choosing to be grateful, I, I can't give away what I don't have. Be, do, have. So it starts at the B level, being grateful. But how do you do that? Let's talk a little bit about some of our values and some of the components of our lives. Break that down before we talk about gratitude per se. Those excuses we mentioned, time, energy, money, those are all reflections of our values, the way we spend our time, the way we spend our energy, the way we spend our money. You tell us, what is really important to you? Maybe the dissonance, the resistance you're feeling is that what you're actually spending your time and money on aren't what are important to you. The way you're investing for your health isn't actually what's important to you. The relationships you have, are those really what are important to you? And if not, why are you investing? Why are you making the choice to do that? Time, money. If the thing that I'm buying isn't the thing I care about, then why am I buying it? You get the idea. Wealth is a great magnifier. Your problems get bigger, like your weaknesses are more evident to everyone else and yourself if you have more money. It doesn't actually change anything. I don't remember the title of the movie, but uh, I watched some clips on YouTube of this movie that was documenting lottery winners. Lucky. Lucky, thank you. Their lives go, go to shambles. They receive all this money that they don't know what to do with because they haven't been cultivating a heart that's ready for it. And so their problems that are, however big they are, are only bigger when you bring more money into the equation. And it's also, we, we place a strong cultural emphasis on money as value, but there are lots of other kinds of value. My, uh, my family gets adjusted for free, covered through the office, which is awesome, and we make use of that care because it's valuable to us. We want to see our kids thrive, so it's like, get them in here as often as possible. There are other things that we value that we, we spend ourselves on that aren't money. So just think about that. Ooh, can you get that any bigger? Let's make that bigger. Has anyone heard this quote? I'll read it. The Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, answered, Man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. <coughs> he lives as if he never was never going to die, and then he dies having never really lived. Gratitude is underneath all these aspects of our life. And if we're not, what we're choosing is incongruous with what we actually care about, that's just going to show up as this silly, like this quote sums it up so perfectly. It's, it seems silly. We all do it. But that's not what our life is about. What do you choose to do with your time? 
take an audit. There's some homework if you want it. Take an audit of how you spend your time during the week. And then ask yourself, is that what I care about? Am I investing in this project three hours a day because it's what I feel I have to do to appease this person? When I'm complaining to my spouse about this at work, what could I do differently? What could I be spending my time on? And then relationships. We are attracting to a degree what we're putting out there, right? So what I am being is also what I am opening myself up to. And do I like what I see around me? Am I getting my priorities straight? My relationship with God, with my family? How that plays into my business? How that plays into the things I do with my spare time? And how am I using that time? Does my free time get lost on Facebook? No. No. I like it. Does the thing I say that I want to do every weekend, I want to go on a hike this weekend, I want to go on a hike this weekend. Do I keep pushing that out, and why do I do that? Just looking at yourself, these are some questions to take forward as we go. And career. How to get paid to live out your purpose is not how a lot of people view career. What would it look like for you to, with either the job you already have or with something else, to see that as your vocation, your work, living out your purpose in the world. What would that take? What would that look like? This tree is like you. To thrive and blossom, it needs some water. Guess what that water is? Gratitude. It's underneath everything. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. There are a whole host of benefits of gratitude. We've covered the barriers, so now we need to move on to some of the perks of what gratitude does for you. But it starts with just being present to what is already in front of you and around you. I've combed through about 30 studies now, academic studies, just on the subject of gratitude and how it affects you, physiologically, psychologically, et cetera. And this is trying to composite some of the information in a picture. If you search on Google, you'll find something like this. But there's a lot of research out there talking about the positive effects of gratitude. I'll just name a couple. Increased self-esteem, less self-centered, happier memories and more resilient, kinder, deeper relationships, I read an article that was talking about how because people like you more when you're grateful, other things uh, start happening in your life. Improved sleep, less sick, increased energy. Would you like more energy? I get people commenting all the time about my energy. What do you think that is? Better management, goal achievement, and career. More fit people are more grateful. Those are some of the benefits, and they're all, almost all external, right? Like we could see if someone's happy, or we could see if someone's biceps are bigger. But how do you cultivate it? How do you cultivate that? Wanted to give two word pictures for you that I think sum up what gratitude does for you in your life. You become a magnet. I like the analogy of the open hand. So closed fist would be a scarcity mindset, would be a victim mentality of, I don't have enough. I need to hold on to what I have because I don't have enough. I'm not trusting, I'm not open, I'm not receptive. And consequently, if there was like water or sand and someone's trying to pour it in my hand, I don't have room for any of it, right? Open that hand up. Not only could I give, but I can receive with an open hand. And when you open that hand, all of a sudden stuff starts to fill. You start to receive things, not because you're trying to, but because you're grateful for it. Grateful for what you already have and what you already are. Thermostat. This is one we use in our office a lot. Rather than being a thermometer that is dictated to 
by the conditions of the room. Oh. It is 77 degrees. It's 38 degrees. What if you got to set your temperature and everybody else got to walk into the room that you create? This is the good stuff. We know a little bit about what holds us back from gratitude. We know a little bit about what gratitude does in our lives. And there's more, and we can talk about it afterwards. But how do you make gratitude a practice? Disclaimer. This is extremely personal. What I don't hope to do is to give you a cookie cutter outline that you just follow. Like one, two, three, yay. Not what I'm going for. So listen for what sticks out to you. Like if there are certain things that I'm throwing out there, certain ideas that stick, then go for it. And we'll touch on how to implement as we go, okay? But I'm not, uh, you can think outside of what I'm saying and what I do myself might not work for you. Make sense? This one is, oh, key. I got asked one time, we were working uh, at Wellness Fair for Collins and Awesome Kids Day, and the ladies at the booth next to us were like, what, what are you on? <laughs> like, is, there a, is there a pill? <laughs> is there a, is there a doctor I can go to? You know, like, are you taking anything? <laughs> and I got to tell her, well, you know what? I wake up in the morning, and I drink a big cup of joy, first thing. Then I drink a tall glass of water. Then I run or work out. Then I pray, meditate. And then I prepare myself for my day, what I want to do. And she was just kind of like, huh. Didn't say much after that, at least not in that conversation. But that's my routine. Came up with a little acronym to help you out. Mocha. Favorite drink? Future reference. Uh, meditation, orientation, creation, hydration, ambulation. Now, the key with this routine is that gratitude, you'll notice that gratitude isn't like one of these steps. Like I wake up and I say, okay, this is the gratitude moment. Where do my gratitude thing? It's got to be in each part of that. So what are you meditating on? What you're focusing on expands. When you're emptying yourself, are you making time to fill yourself up with some gratitude? That's a part of my practice. And you heard my affirmation. That falls into that category. Okay? But doing something daily, just like I wouldn't expect to gain a lot of muscle mass or to lose weight if I went to the gym once a month, twice a year, just during the month of January, I, it's hard to be transformed by a practice that you're not doing. And so make it, make it daily. It doesn't have to be this complicated. Mm -hmm. Th this is for me because I feel like if I don't run, then I'm not really going to sit still to pray. If I don't get some energy out, I'm not going to be able to write anything. So this is, this is what I've developed for me. But do something that works for you. And because it's your rhythm, your ritual, make a plan. <laughs> And commit to it. If you're not going to commit to a plan, a set period of time even, uh, then you're wasting your time with your practice. There's nothing wrong with the random acts of kindness and other parts of gratitude, but that's not your core personal practice for you. Make sense? But yeah. Can you do the acronym again? Yeah. And can you explain each letter yes. a little bit more? Yes. Sure. MOCA is the acronym. M, meditation. So meditation is where there's a couple different, there's a whole books on meditation. I usually do some kind of body prayer, like movement, stretching, breathing oriented, <clears throat> and then there will be like words, my affirmations, my prayers for the day, just what's on my heart at that moment, kind of processing after I've had a chance to center. Orientation, O. The problem with this is it kind of did, works out of order. So O is orientation. Usually this is the last thing I do. 
And it's, I'm aware of what lies before me in my day, and I just make a plan. Like, if, are there any big projects, or are there anything that was kind of bouncing around in my mind when I first woke up? Write it down, make a plan. And not just, what are the things that I have to do, but how am I going to be today? I uh, write in this journal just about every morning, and one of the things I do is I write, what am I grateful for today? What do I get to do today? How do I get to be? And just looking at a B level of how I want to show up in my day. I know the things I have to do. I know the stuff that lies before me. How am I going to be and show up in those things? And sometimes, <coughs> this is where I dare myself to do something unexpected. Like, ah, oh, today I'm going to make a phone call to someone I haven't talked to in three years. Just spontaneous. But make a plan, stick to the plan. C is creation. We all have things that bring us joy, right? We all have talents and abilities. If you're not self-expressing, that will affect your attitude too. Whether it's gardening, cooking, writing, what recreates space for you? What is nourishing to your soul? I uh, finish a blog or I finish a chapter in my book and I'm like, I'm jazzed. I can do anything today. Let's go. Well, let's do it. I got the hard thing done. I sat down and wrote for an hour. Awesome. Let's go. H, hydration. That cup of joy thing is kind of a joke, but it's also not a joke. What water does for your body is pretty incredible. Also, you're mostly water. So you wake up, you're a little dehydrated, late night, early morning, whatever. You don't need coffee yet. You don't need coffee. You don't need the caffeine. You just need to flush your system, hydrate, get yourself ready, help your body wake up. Hydration. Making sense. Heard that. <laughs> A. Ambulation. It's a treat, a special treat. Fall for down the mocha? No, that's like that's like a special treat for way later on. It's not because I need the energy. <laughs> um, a is ambulation. My father-in-law doesn't like running. I love running. Some people like swimming. Some people like mountain biking. Move your body. Wake up. Get in touch with yourself as not just a rational brain, but as something alive. That's going to affect your level of gratitude, too. You're going to show up and express at a higher level because you moved. I teach a 6 and 6.30 class at Hot Feet, a 20-minute workout. And the people kind of lumbering through the door at that part of the morning, like you see it. But after a 20-minute workout, woo, you can do anything. Let's go. Get this party started! Right, Haley? Right? <laughs> Making sense? So whatever order, like I'm not married to these letters, um, the order they happen in, I know what works for me. Usually it's water, run, pray, write, and then plan. Like, it doesn't happen in the order I wrote it for you. But those are five pillars for me that set me up for a great day. And if I didn't wake up feeling great or happy, after that I'm like, hell yeah, let's go! I was your personal practice. Shared practice. Oh, this is fun too. This is fun too. Have you noticed how things take off when you have other people involved in them? Like what is hard for one person to do alone suddenly just exponentially increases in effectiveness when you involve other people. Have you noticed this? So a shared practice. I feel super grateful every week. We have a couple of practices that I'll touch on. Uh, one of our practices for staff meeting at Collins Chiropractic is we start a meeting off with, what are you grateful for? And we go in a circle. And it's like, if you show up to the meeting and you're not happy, you're not thinking about something that matters in your life, by the end of everyone else sharing, you've got something. So having that support and accountability and even expectation. Like, hey, I, I love you. I care about you. I love who you are. Be grateful. <laughs> you matter. So don't... It's not that 
there's no place for being sad. It's not that there's no place for challenge or pain. That, that stuff exists. It's just a matter of what are you focusing on and how are you encouraging people around you? How are they encouraging you? So a shared practice. Um, a couple ideas on this. A gratitude jar for your family. Three by five note cards and a big bowl or a vase or something. And just, even if it's once a day, like just jot down some of the things that you were thankful for, your family was thankful for, and just throw one card in. Go in at the end of the year. Wow, May 25th, Hosanna was thankful that dad could stand on his head and make funny noises. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Hosanna's my daughter. Three year old daughter, by the way. It doesn't really matter what. Um, but make it a shared practice. I think also we talk about thank yous as this kind of cultural contrived expectation. You just get married. People give you a bunch of stuff. Thank you list. <laughs> Dear Aunt Sally, thank you for the $20 Amazon gift card. Yours sincerely, Ben. That's great. Do thank you cards. It doesn't speak to you. And do them because you want to, not just because you got married or because you had a birthday. That's great. Um, words of affirmation. We do this a lot as a team, too. We do this as a family. Um, at night, when I put my kids to bed, we say, we say prayers. And if there's anything I'm thankful for with my family, it's that my kids all know how to say thank you. It doesn't really matter who it's to. Like, it could be to me. It could be to God. But they, they have this list of things that they say thank you for. It's like the one thing I've taught my kids how to do <laughs> before bed is say thank you. So, like, thank you, God, for daddy. Thank you for preschool. Just making that a part of your practice. I'm, I don't know if you're a believing person or not, and it doesn't really matter. Just make gratitude a part of your practice. Share with the people that you love. Matter in your life. For some people, too, um, the challenge of a shared practice is, well, what if I don't live with anyone? Or what if my, my work environment is hostile? You've got a cell phone. You've got a cell phone. You've got to have one person in your life who cares about you, who gets you. Send a weekly thank you or gratitude text, like, today I'm thankful for this. And just make one person your accountability partner. Hey, Joe, did you say your affirmations this morning? Yes, I did. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for these new shoes I got. Great. Awesome. Again, just putting out ideas. I feel like you guys will have lots of other stuff that I didn't mention. Just listen for it and look into it. Acts of thankfulness. <coughs> we talked about thank you cards. What are some other ways, on show of hands, or not show of hands, raise your hand if you have a comment. What are some ways that you express your gratitude? really cool. We should hang out. <laughs> I didn't hear what she said. She likes to cook or bake and give the food to people. Anybody else? I like to give uh, unexpected coffee, like at Starbucks or something. Nice. Like to the person lying behind you or to someone in your life? Somebody in my life usually. I don't go often enough to do somebody behind me, but right. usually if I get it it's for a purpose. I know that person likes it. Like a doctor that I went to the other day, I took one. That's awesome. So cool. So you guys all have that creativity. You all do this stuff all the time. I'm talking to a really grateful group of people <laughs> that I know firsthand. So be intentional. Be spontaneous. Be random in your acts of thankfulness. But also have your eye on the lookout. Have your intention set that express your gratitude to other people. The funny thing about this is, if you get flowers for someone else, it'll make your day. Mm -hmm. If you buy that someone else that cup of coffee, you're already feeling awesome. They haven't even responded to it yet. So just have that orientation. Acts of thankfulness. With that, the key component underneath the external elements of your practice is your thought life. So moment by moment by moment, we're, we have this tendency, this compulsion to complain. This compulsion of like things aren't right. And nature, nurture, I don't know. But I'm 
just aware of it within myself. How do you catch yourself on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, let alone set the daily rituals and routines? Thought of an acronym for you. Act. Accept, choose, think. Remember that resistance picture we were talking about? Guy didn't look too happy. Guy looked a little under duress. If you're resisting your life, this is important, if you're resisting your life to things right in front of you, you're missing it. Only when you accept your life as it is, acknowledge things as they are, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, can you then choose to be grateful. My, uh, my family has a cat. Uh, her name's Sadie. She's my cat originally. And uh, she just does these little things that drive some of the people in the house crazy. Little things. So I stopped to think about it. It's like, well, I could get rid of Sadie. We could find another home for her. Or we could just accept that she is the way she is and love her as she is. It's really that simple. And not, you don't get to make that choice for people in your life, maybe. You don't get to make that choice for uh, things about your job. But you can accept things as they are. Acknowledge things as you feel them. Actually, before I move on, that's another component, too. That cognitive dissonance that you feel. Just acknowledge it. Right now, I am upset because I thought things were going to go a different way. I thought I was going to get that promotion today. And I'm disappointed. Just acknowledge it. It happens. If you're feeling it, you by putting it out there, you can step back and look at it. But until you do that, it's like it's in you. It's not in you. Accept. Then choose. This is the fun part. Because you have power. You have the power of choice. You're a human being. Not only do things happen to you but you can choose how to respond to them. I wrote a piece this last week about uh, what do you do when you get cut off in traffic? Well, first you start by acknowledging what happens. Well, this Cadillac Escalade and the driver of the Cadillac Escalade pulled in front of me quickly, so I had to brake. My heart rate was elevated. I slowed down my car so I didn't hit them, and that's what happened. That's what happened. What comes next too often is the choice of, oh, that jerk. Oh. Man, I just hate when people, right? That was my choice. They didn't do anything to me. They might be oblivious. But even my getting upset about that, that's my choice. What could I choose instead? Well, I could choose to be happy to be alive. I am so glad that nothing happened. I'm not saying that you should be happy that that guy cut you off. Those close collisions are scary. I've been in an accident. Not fun. I would not hope anyone relive the story I told you earlier on. But you can choose to respond to it a different way. And the way I'm suggesting you choose is thankfulness. Something bad happens to you, find yourself alive. This happens in nanoseconds, so we have to respond really quick, right? This happens. This is how I feel. This is what I'm going to do. Making sense? This is not clicking for anybody. Underneath everything you do on a daily basis, on the spontaneous things you do to be grateful, uh, as you cultivate this grateful heart, this abundant life, this becomes your moment-by-moment moment practice. Moment-by-moment-by-moment by moment by moment practice. As you accept your life for what it is, you'll get to see the things that are beautiful. You can make the meaning what you want it to be. This is where I live. I choose to make this house a home. And I'm so glad I do, not just because other people don't have, but because I love where I live. And here are the things about it that I love. This becomes your daily, moment-by-moment -moment practice. This is the practice of gratitude. Accepting, choosing, and thinking. And again, it all comes back to be, do, have. 
that's at your B level. You're creating new neural pathways that are flowing with gratitude all the time. As you, moment by moment, day in, day out, by yourself and with other people, create space for appreciating what is beautiful about your life. As you take the people in your life and say, you know what? Maybe that thing used to irritate me, but I'm going to choose to love and accept them for who they are. Your job, if you don't like it, choose a different one. And if you can find a way to make it work, then make it work. But do it with joy. Do it with gratitude. Once you have that B level down, that practice of choosing gratitude, those acts of kindness are going to flow. The buying the coffee at Starbucks for someone else. The actually writing a genuine thank you letter to someone who bought you something. And not just sloughing through a list on a paper. The hug that lasts for longer than five seconds because you're so glad to see someone. And not just passing by a potential encounter. And the cool thing is that you do get to have it. With that open hand, that open heart, you're going to draw things to you. The things you dream about are just going to start to show up. Like this talk for me. It's just going to show up, not because I did anything to make it happen, but because I was just open and thankful and appreciative. You're going to be healthy and happy in who you want to be, not because you're only doing those things, but because you have a grateful heart. So that is the transforming power of gratitude. That's what I want to share with you guys tonight. Thank you again so much for being here. And I invite you to not just make gratitude an idea, but to make it a practice and something that you embrace for